Hey guys, what's up? Long time no see. Sorry about that. Just a lot's been going on lately. Um, I just recently got back from being in Texas for a while to go see my special person, which was great. I had a wonderful time. Got to explore Amarillo, which was surprisingly bigger than I thought it would be. Um, we made some really great memories out there together, and it was it was just an all-around great time. Now, the lights aren't flickering in the background because I'm sitting at the table this time to do this recording and stuff. I wanted to talk to you guys about a book that I read that was super, super hyped, but I read it while I was on vacation. I got to part five, and I still didn't understand what was going on. I just thought it sucked. And that book, believe it or not, and it's going to get me a lot of hate, but that's okay. We Were Liars by E. K. E. Lockhart. Um, I still don't know what I read. I'm hoping that the next ones are going to be better. Um... Yeah, I did recently, I'm on my phone right here, um, I did recently borrow from Hoopla, which is the library app that I have for like audiobooks and books in general and stuff. I did recently borrow um, Stephen King's Revival. I picked that up when I was in Salina the last time. So I did recently borrow that. I can see myself glitching, that's kind of weird. Um, sorry. <laughs> Are you tired? He's just tired. I know nothing's working. Um, okay. So let's go to my hoopla. And I just finished uh The Housewife Assassin's Handbook by Josie Brown. That was great. I loved it. That was really, really good and I didn't expect that to happen. I did find out that there is a sequel to that, so I'm going to be looking for that one soon. I skipped Broken Love by Stacey Marie Brown because it just, that's the third book in a trilogy. I read the first one, which I she was called Shattered Love. The next one is, I don't remember, Twisted Love, and then it's Broken Love, I think. Um, I'm about to be finished. I'm, what, 84, 20 chapters away from finishing The Suicide House by Charlie Don Donlia, and that's really good. I have it on audio, and I got up to chapter 84 on the audiobook, and I just decided I was going to finish it out with the physical book, since my best friend Christine was so kind to get me a physical copy of the book when she was in Hutchinson and went to this bookstore. She instantly thought of me, which is great, and I really appreciate it. Um... I picked up All the Beautiful Lives by Peter Swanson because I think it was Books by Books with Chloe said that she didn't like it and it kind of deterred me a little bit. Um, I guess it has like an incest moment in it and that's just like a trigger. But I liked The Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. So I'm going to go ahead and give All the Beautiful Lives a try as well, even though it may have a incesty feel to it. Just try it out. I found The Ghostly Tales of Cleveland by Beth A. Richard. Um, it's just like kind of like um, Haunted Ohio or whatever those books were that I used to read all the time. And this one takes place for Cleveland, Ohio. And I glitched again. Oh, there we go. Um, for Cleveland, and it's Cleveland, Ohio stories, like scary stories and things like that. So I thought that was kind of cool. I am originally born and raised for a while in Cleveland, Ohio. So, um, I found Halloween Tales, uh, by Oliver G. Boyce Common. Com Common? I don't know how to pronounce that. But, um, let's get into the witchy Halloween-y type spirit, right? 
Um, and I am currently working on V.E. Schwab's Extraordinary, or Extraordinary. Um, it is her uh, comic book that she's doing, and it's really good. I'm on the third issue already, and I'm really, really happy with it. It's very, very interesting. Now, that is my hoopla, okay? Um, my Kindle is filled with a bunch of samples of books to see if I'm actually even going to like them. There are a couple that I have come across that I actually do like. Um, but with that being said, I wanted to jump into my bookshelves and what I want to do is I want to pull five spooky looking books and I'll explain why I picked them off the shelf and what makes them Halloween-y, October, spooktober-y, you know. Um, but a quick little side note before I get into that, um... <laughs> Happy Halloween, guys. Like, it's October. Can you believe it? Uh, there are so many great things right now going on on YouTube with it being October. Spooktober started, and I absolutely love it. There's Netflix movies that came out that are looking really good. I just, I gotta do a shout out. I'm so sorry. Possessed by Horror, you are the bomb. Your code for Shutter for 30 days of free Shutter absolutely amazing i'm currently working on the mortuary collection or yeah the mortuary collections on shutter right now absolutely love it it's very interesting it's kind of like a haunted ohio type thing scary stories to tell in the dark type thing um i am also going to be checking out the creep show because they brought that creepy guy back um so i'm really excited about that um the only thing i will say about shutter is they have one that says night of the goal and all it is is a jack-o-lantern pumpkin with like creepy sounds in the back and that's it for like an hour long i mean if you want like an ambiance in the background yeah that's great but as for a psychological thriller that's not a psychological thriller at all <laughs> But, um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and pick some five spooky books off my shelves, and we shall see how that goes. I am going to be picking back up The Outsider by Stephen King. I'm going to actually try and finish that book. We are halfway through it, and I had to put it down. I'm going to attempt to pick it back up again. So, wish me luck with that. But with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pause this. I'm going to go pick out some books, and then I'll see you in a few minutes. Maybe, <laughs> if I can hit the pause button. Alright, so I did something a little different. I pulled all the books that gave me, like, creepy, Halloween-y, nightmarish vibes. So, we'll have to decide for together what we want to actually read. Alright, so as I said, sorry, the sun's starting to go down. You might see some, like, weird stuff on the... Oh, you can't see it. Never mind. I have some Halloween decor up and stuff in the windows, and it kind of does, like, a weird look. Um, but, okay, so, as I said, I'm going to grab Stephen King's The Outsider again. I am 187 pages in. Uh, Footsteps in Cantaloupe, July 18th to July 20th. Okay, so I'm not that far in at all, if you really think about it. See, I still have all of this to go. But we're going to go ahead and pick this back up for sure. Now, this is where it's going to get a little uh, difficult. I was going to, I was going to get rid of this book right here. It's um, 17 Turbulent Tales, Flight or Fright. Edited by Stephen King. Um, I'm not quite sure what it's about. It's Stephen King edited, though. Scary, maybe. I don't know. I saw the word fright, and I was like, hey, and Stephen King, and I was like, double hey. So... It says, welcome to Flight or Fright, an anthology about all the things that can go horribly wrong when you're sp suspended six miles in the air, hurtling through space at more than 500 miles per hour and sealed up in a metal tube like a coffin with hundreds of strangers. Featuring brand new standout original stories by Joe Hill and Stephen Keen, as well as 14 classic tales and one poem from the likes of Richard Matheson. 
Ray Bradbury, Roald Dahl, Dan Simmons, Arthur Conan Doyle, and many others. Flight or Fright is, as Keen says, ideal airplane reading, especially on stormy descents. Even if you are safe on the ground, you might want to buckle up nice and tight. It sounds good. But maybe it's not. It doesn't sound like it would be a Halloween y type, spooktober type deal. It sounds more like a travel book. So we're going to say no to this one. See how that works? <laughs> so I'll go back into the palace. We'll have to like give a second chance to try and get through and read. Um, now, the other one I have from there is Freaks. It says Step Inside a Wondrously Strange New World by Amanda Hawking. Um, it looks like this circusy, you know, that type of thing. When all your friends are misfits, how do you figure out where you belong? Um, in a world of magical visions and pyrokinesis, Mara just wants to have a normal life, but is that possible? She's become used to the extra extraordinary. Roaming from place to place with Gideon Dave. Devorin's traveling carnival. She longs for an ordinary life where no one has the ability to levitate or predict the future. She gets her chance when the struggling sideshow sets up camp in the small town of Caudry and she meets a gorgeous local guy named Gabe, but before Lamar realizes there's a dark presence lurking in the town that's threatening the lives of her friends. She has seven days to take control of a power she didn't know she had in order to save everyone she cares about and change the future forever. Okay, yeah, no. See, this is more small town killing type deal not halloween-esque dark and stuff like that all right what is gonna definitely be on there i don't know <laughs> um i have mary shelley's frankenstein i've actually never actually read it or i did read it yes i did read it actually I read up to page 42 in it, so this would probably be a good one to pick up and read. Um, Frankenstein, it's also a classic, so that's the possibility. Um, I had a Clockwork Orange, and I've never known anything about it. A vicious 15-year-old Droog is a central character of this 1963 classic and Anthony Burgess's nightmare vision of the future where the criminals take over after dark. The story is told by the central character Alex who talks in a brutal invented slang that brilliantly renders his and his friend's social pathology. It is a frightening fable about good and evil and the meaning of human freedom and when the state undertakes to reform Alex to redeem him, the novel asks, at what cost? This edition includes the controversial last chapter not published in the first edition in Burgess's introduction, Clockwork Orange Resucked. My copy is extremely um, destroyed, as you can see. It's warped. It's very, very oldly warped. Um, maybe not. Maybe not a Halloween-esque type. I'm trying here, guys. <laughs> um, I have Don't Look by Alexandra Ivy. No idea what this is about, but it kind of looks good. Maybe? Maybe I'm doing this whole Halloween-esque thing wrong. Maybe this is just like... Maybe we should do a serial killer series. That would be cool. Like murder and mystery oh because it's thriller and suspense what am i thinking okay anyway if you're on his list you're as good as dead a woman's naked body is discovered cold and pale as the surrounding snow except for the crimson scarf around her neck the weeks that follow bring more victims and evidence of a terrifying pattern the killer has a list and every woman on it will get what she deserves See, this isn't this isn't scary either this is like killers and stuff and we don't need that all right so i saw this one this one kind of looks um spooky ish it's our kind of cruelty by aramita hall um it says this is a love story but then it's crossed out in red pen it says my case fought his way out of a brutal childhood and into a quiet if lonely life before he met verity v was the first person to understand him 
to love him. In return, Mike has dedicated his life to making her happy. He secured the right job. He's found the perfect home. He sculpted himself into the physical ideal V has always wanted. He's ready to start their blissful life together. It doesn't matter that V hasn't been returning his emails or phone calls. It doesn't matter that she says she's marrying Angus. It's all just part of the secret game they used to play. As long as Mike watches V closely, he'll see the signs. If he keeps track of her every move, he'll know just when to come to her rescue. It's a darkly twisted love story, one that draws razor-sharp lines between love and obsession, between truth and perception, and dares you to pick a side. Okay, this isn't, this is not going very well, is it? <laughs> um, okay, so I found Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. Zappia. It talks about monsters and stuff, so I thought maybe it would work. Um, in the real world, Eliza Merck is shy, weird, and friendless. Online, she's Lady Constellation, the anonymous creator of the wildly popular webcomic Monstrous Sea. Then Wallace Wardland, Monstrous Sea's biggest fan fiction writer, transfers to her school and draws her into a life offline she never could have imagined. When Eliza's secret is accidentally shared with the world, everything she's built, her story, her relationship with Wallace, and even her sanity begins to fall apart. Okay, so this is actually more like a mental health type thing. I did not realize that. Um, so, no, this one doesn't work either. Guys, I'm struggling. <laughs> okay, this one has to work. It's Stephen King's If It Bleeds. All right, this is like an anthology, different things, and like that. Readers adore Stephen King's novels, and his short stories are their own dark tree. Briefer, but just as impactful and endearing as his longer fiction, Different Seasons. The Knockout King collection featuring Rita and the body, blah, blah, blah. If It Bleeds gives readers four brilliant new stories sure to prove as iconic as their predecessors. Once again, King's remarkable range is on full display. In the title story, reader favorite Holly Gibney um, must face her fears as possibly another outsider, this time on her own. And Mr. Harrigan's phone and integration generational friendship has a disturbing afterlife. Okay, so afterlife, that's good, right? Uh, one of King's great concerns is evil, and in If It Bleeds, there's plenty of it. Imagine in the title story as a big bird, all frowsy and frosty gray. There's also evil's opposite, which in King's fiction often manifests as friendship. In this collection, Holly is reminded that friendship is not only life-affirming, but can be life-saving. King also reminds us that life's quotidian pleasures are even more glorious because they are fleeting. The Irish good fortune of a beautiful blue day after a string of gray ones. The light of dancing really well and when every move feels perfect, a serendipitous meeting. So in these moments, Hakeem's ability to describe pure joy rivals his ability to terrify us. Okay, so this has the words terrify and afterlife. So I'm going to say this is a win. So that's going to, of course it's a win. It's Stephen King, of course. <laughs> I mean, of course. All right. I pulled this one out of its casing just for this video. Um, my pride and joy, Ellen Hopkins. This is tricks, okay? And tricks, trick or treat, you know that kind of thing. Maybe I got a winner here too. Five teenagers from all over the country, three girls, two guys, four straight, one gay. Some rich, some poor, living their lives as best they can, but all searching for freedom, safety, family, love. What they don't expect, though, is all that can happen when those powerful little words, I love you, are said for the wrong reasons. They remain separate at first and interweave to tell a larger story about making choices, taking leaps of faith, falling down, and growing up. These teens are fighting out what sex and love are all about while asking, can I ever feel okay about myself? Well, that's not the right one. Damn. Pulled this off for no reason. Okay. Well, shoot. Uh. All right. So those are from that shelf. Um, I do have Diary of a Serial Killer. This is one of my newer books. This is um, is a big boy. Um, get inside the mind of a killer. He looks like the boy next door. He could be the young man dating your daughter or sister. He could be the boy who cuts your lawn. He considers himself an artist creating twisted art using human canvases. 
Leaving a trail of once beautiful but now shattered female bodies in his wake, he always stays one step ahead of the police. He is highly organized. He is highly motivated. He does not believe he can be caught, and the body count is rising. So this is another... This isn't it either. Okay, so that's not going to win either. All right, what about this one? Patricia McDonald's The Girl Next Door. Uh, the affluent town of Hoffman, New Jersey, reeled in disbelief when highly esteemed physician Duncan Avery stabbed his wife, Marcia, to death one spring evening. The two Avery sons turned their backs on their father, but his daughter, Nina, never stopped believing in his innocence. Now, 15 years later, Nina, a struggling actress in New York City, returns to Hoffman when her father is paroled and insists on resettling there. Um... Her patron novels of domestic suspense that twist and turn with surprises. Now she presents a riveting thriller about a woman who finds her life threatened when she returns to her picture-perfect suburban hometown where a brutal crime shattered family when she was a teenager. Okay, so this one's not it either. This is another fucking killer one. We would have a great... <laughs> dun -dun -dun. Uh, killer collection series thing. Alright, what is this one? The House Next Door. By James Patterson. It's three electrifying thrillers and the dangers that lurk in plain sight. Um, mother of four, Laura Sherman was thrilled when her new neighbor invited her on some errands, but a few quick tasks became a long lunch, and now things could get go too far with a man who isn't what he seems. Uh, six girls have gone missing. Detective McGrath knows the only way to find them is to get close to the suspect's wife, maybe too close. We are not alone. The message found by disgraced other four scientists, Robert Bardot, will change the world. Now he's the target of a nationwide manhunt. And his future hangs in the balance. Okay, these don't sound like it's that either. Okay, I'm failing here, guys. Um, Witch and Wizard. It's overwhelming. A city's worth of angry faces staring up at me like I'm a wicked criminal. The stadium is filled past capacity. Hundreds of thousands of curious uncaring or at least in different faces. There are no moist eyes, no less tears, no words of protest, no stomping feet, no fists raised in solidarity. In fact, as the countdown ticker flashes onto the giant video screens, it's looking to be my family's last day. I see my brother, Wit, wondering if there's some last-minute way out of this. I see my mother crying quietly for Wit and me. I see my father stooped with her designation, but smiling at me, and my brother trying to remind us that there's no point being miserable in our last moments on this planet. But I'm getting ahead of myself. There's a lot to cover before we get to the details of Republic executions. So let's go back a bit. Mm. I don't know. Witch and wizard? And it's just my Wissy and Wit all good. A sister and brother who were torn from their family in the middle of the night, slammed into prison and accused of being a witch and wizard. They are not alone in their terrifying predicament. Thousands of young people have been kidnapped. Some have been accused, many others remain missing. Their fate is unknown, and the worst is fear for the ruling regime will stop at nothing to suppress life and liberty. Music and books, art and magic, and the pursuit of being a normal teenager. Most copies of the story have already been seized, shredded, or burned. Read this rare surviving edition and pass it along with care before it's too late. Okay, no. That's a survival book. Alright, what about The Shadows by Alex North? They believed they could control their dreams inside the created nightmare. You knew a teenager like Charlie Crabtree, a dark imagination, a sinister smile, always on the outside of the group. Some part of you suspects that he might be capable of doing something awful. 25 years ago, Crabtree did just that, committing a murder so shocking that it's attracted that strange kind of infamy that only exists on the darkest corners of the internet and has inspired more than one copycat. Paul has slowly put his life back together, but now his mother, old and suffering from dementia, has taken a turn for the worse. Though every inch of him resists if it is time to come home, it's not long before things start to go wrong. Beck is investigating another copycat that has struck in the nearby town of Featherbrook. His mother is distressed, oh. insistent that there's something in the house and someone is following him, which reminds me of the most unsettling thing about that awful day 25 years ago. It wasn't just the murder. It was the fact that afterward, Charlie Crouch was never seen again. All right, so it gave me, like, spooky vibes and stuff, and then it just went a killer again. All right, I got a winner on this one. I can tell you that for a 110% fact. 
Diary of a Haunting, Book of Shadows by M. Verano. I know I got a winner on this one. All Melanie wants is a blank book where she can keep a journal of her private thoughts. One day while browsing in a used bookshop, she finds a perfect blank book, smooth black leather with strange symbols in Boston gold. Her Wiccan friend Lara tells her it's better suited to be a magical spell book called the Book of Shadows. Melanie doesn't know much about that stuff, but Lara, her boyfriend Caleb, and his friend Lucas get her started by writing their own made-up spells inside the book's tempting pages. What they didn't expect was a new spell showing up inside the book and hearing none of them recognizes. Soon they realize that the spells suggested by the Book of Shadows work, but not without wreaking havoc on the lives of the four teenagers. This one sounds a little bit better. This one actually sounds, and it has haunting in it. Um, Book of Shadows, Magical, and Wiccan. So, I say that's a winner. Final Girls. No, this is not going to work because this is another killer book. A Corpse's Nightmare. Back from the Dead. Okay, this one might work. On a cold December night, folklorist Fever Devlin is nearly murdered in his sleep. After spending three months in a coma, he wakes up, determined to find out who shot him and why. But Fever is in no shape to track a killer. He's still recovering from injuries that have left him shifting between dreams and reality, memories and half-truths. His one lead is the blue tin box that intruder stole. It belongs to Fever's mother and was filled with family memorabilia and photos. Pieces of a puzzle that has haunted forever since... Fever since childhood. Now he must unravel a century ago old saga of murder, fear, and hate that began in 1920s Chicago and traveled to Blue Mountain, Georgia. Somehow Fever is at the center of life but in terrible danger as a killer returns to bury Fever and his family secrets in a cold, permanent grave. Nope. Feed. By Mira Grant. The good news, we survived. The bad news, so did they. Live or dead, the truth won't rest. My name is Georgia Mason, and I am begging you, rise up while you can. The year was 2014. We had cured cancer. We had beaten the common cold, but in doing so, we had created something new, something terrible that no one could stop. The infection spread virus blocks taking over bodies and minds with one unsolvable command, feed. Now, 20 years after the rising, Georgia and Sean Mason are on the trial, trail of the biggest story of their lives, the dark conspiracy behind the infected. The truth will out, even if it kills them. All right, so this sounds more like a, uh, oh boy. No, this is another survival book. All right, what about Hater by David Moody? Let's see what this one's about. Society is wracked by a sudden increase in the number of violent assaults on individuals. Cursed and haters by the media, the attackers strike without warning, killing all who cross their path. As a hundred random attacks become a thousand and hundreds of thousands, it soon becomes clear that everyone, irrespective of race, class, or any other indifference, has the potential to become a victim or a hater. People are afraid to go to work, afraid to leave their homes, and increasingly afraid that at any moment their friends, even their closest family, could turn on them with ultra-violent intent. Waking up each morning, no matter how well defended, everyone must now consider the fact that they, by the end of the day, they might be a dead or become a killer themselves. So, nope, this is about killers. Damn, we were so close. The blood was like, yes, but no, it's not. It's another killer book. All right, Ghost Summer Stories by Tanarvi Du. Tanarvi Du. While they're weaving family life and history into dark fiction or writing speculative Afrofuturism, American Book Award winner and essence bustling author Tanarvi Du's work is both riveting and enlightening. In Ghost Summer Stories, her debut collection of short fiction, Du takes us to a small Florida town haunted by both literal and figurative ghosts into future scenarios that seem all too possible and provides empathetic portraits of those whose lives are touched by otherness. Featuring an award-winning novella of 15 stories, one of which has never been published before, Ghost Summer Stories are sure to be disturbing and delights. Okay, so this talks about ghosts and hauntings. This is a winner. And finally, we have The Others. Four Women, One Fatal Promise. A serial killer is on the loose and tell of it. Each victim is found tied to a chair with a baby doll glued to their hands. The word mother carved into their foreheads like a mark of Cain. Stowed away between the wax figure into the Bible Museum where she works, Sheila Heller suspects that she alone knows the connection between the victims. The killing seems to be linked by a pact to their group all made at university and never have children. Okay. So, yeah, this one 
is about like a killer and stuff, but I'm just going to go ahead and add it because I actually got this from a book, a box recently, and it's got like a creepy baby doll and baby dolls being creeps. So I'm just going to go ahead and say that one for one or two. So give me a second to put the rest of these books away because these are killer books. I have so many of these. Like if we do a killer collection, like quote unquote, no pun intended killer collection of books to read for next month. Oh my goodness. Like it's almost every book on my shelf. <laughs> Give me one second. All right. Sorry. I had to turn the light on and put all those books away. So the cute little collection that we have going goes as follows. Mary Shelley's Frankenstein about a monster that she brings to life and it wreaks havoc on the world. The Others, which is the only killer book I'm going to read because it's got baby dolls in it and I'm terrified of baby dolls. Ghost Summer Stories because it's ghost stories. Goes great, right? Diary of a Haunting, Book of Shadows because it deals with Wiccan and a creepy journal that puts its own spells into it. Stephen King's If It Bleeds, because these are different stories and they are terrifying, because Stephen King is a terrifying person, and we're going to try and attempt to finish The Outsider by Stephen King, because I don't know if it's an actual person or an entity that killed this child in this book, and that is not a spoiler. So that is the books that I'm going to be reading for October on top of a few others that I'm probably going to add in there if I find them. Um, so yeah, that is everything. I'm sorry that this was super long, but I was having a major, major issue with trying to find Halloween type books. I don't think any of those books take place during Halloween either. Um, I did find a couple comics, though, in Hoopla that I got that are Halloween-related. And we're going to be watching a smorgasbord of horror movies because we now have a 30-day free Shutter account. So we will be watching Halloween. We will be watching The Shining, Doctor Sleep, It, um... Anything that has, like, a grotesque backstory to it. Anything that deals with spirits and clowns. Like, anything that I'm terrified of, basically. So, that goes for spiders, clowns, baby dolls, um, dummies, uh, ghosts, uh, serial killers but we're not going to read serial killer books only because i have so many of them um i think the next thing we're going to be working on though is i think i'm going to go through my shelves and i'm going to categorize like this one's home invasion this one's straight up serial killer this one is small town killing romance which i don't have very many of those i already have my erotica shelf my erotica shelf is already perfect um we're gonna do some that are like high school related some that are college years some that deal with partying some that deal with fame um some that deal with oh i could have done midnight sun oh i didn't think about that i could have done midnight sun which is the Twilight series, and I could have done Ghostwood Song, Deals of Spirits, whoa, or Poison, hmm. oh well, um, but yeah, that's all I got for you guys right now, um, we'll figure something out, um, if you guys have any ideas for any collections that I should pull books off my shelf for next, um, let me know, and again, <laughs> before I end this video, this book sucked. This was like one of my anticipated reads, and I finally read it, bought it, mind you, and read it, and it sucked. So with that being said, have a great day. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.